Welcome back to another NFR Plus video, and for today's episode, Lou and I are going to be going through different track lists and deciding what is the best and worst features on each of these albums. And if this is your first time watching an NFR Plus video, hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell, because we're going to be uploading on this channel every single Thursday. We have tier lists, quizzes, and much more coming on the way. So guys, thank you so much for the recent support on this channel. It means the world to us. But Lou, let's get into this, alright? Because... Feature lists are always a heavy conversation, especially for the albums that we have today. So let's start off with Astroworld. Best and worst, where do you want to start? Let's start off with the best, man. I mean, if I could have picked Stevie Wonder for this, for what he did to that you know, harmonica. I was considering it. I was like, actually considering it. I'm like, does this count, though? There's no actual vocal performance. It but he kind of does, though. that solo like a champion, bro. Like, that was incredible. It added so much to Stop Trying to Be God. But um, other acceptable answers I didn't go with would be Frank Ocean, uh, Drake, Sway Lee on RIP Screw. I absolutely love. I was considering The weekend on skeleton uh, on Skeletons as well. That was a big one. Don Tolliver on Can't Say. Yeah, that's a huge one. Th th that was the one I feel like I was like, oh, fuck. I'm like, I'm really like, are we this? doing Don Tolliver dirty, dirty by not giving one. it to him? I don't know. Uh, but what was the biggest sleeper pick on this track? The list biggest sleeper pick? Um, probably Sway Lee on RIP Screw. I feel like he doesn't get really much conversation for what he did and how he was uh, just super... Instrumental um, to that song. Yeah, he was. Um, but ultimately, James Blake on Stop Trying to Be God. Same thing over here. I mean, yeah. it's just a transcendent vocal performance. It makes you feel like you're floating. Perfect way to close off the best song in the album as Maybe well. Maybe the best written feature in terms of just the actual writing of it. Absolutely. Super strong. Okay, how about the worst though? So this one was pretty easy for me, even though I'm actually a big fan of this verse, and it's Nav on Yosemite. Is it? Is yeah, it I, I feel like I've roasted Nav for this <laughs> verse too many times. I just hope the next time he gets on a Travis album, he's not 120 yards away from the mic. But It got um, fixed, though. Stop I know, that it got joke, fixed. And, and all jokes aside, I, I, find, joke I, find it funny, I find it funny that everyone still roasts him for it because it was never his fault to begin with, <laughs> it bro. Was never like, his it was fault. always the engineer <laughs> that just kind of <laughs> fucked up. But, I mean, uh, that being said... Yeah, I still find it unnecessary. He's literally on the song for 15 seconds. If you actually do the math, bro. Yeah, it's, it's short-lived. It's seconds. a standard nav verse. But still, it adds a little, like, extra sauce and gravy to <sighs> Yosemite. Um, I was even maybe considering Quavo and Who What. That was another, like, feature where I was like, uh. Oh, I wasn't even considering anyone else. Like, this was just an obvious one This for was me. an obvious one for yeah. you? Yeah. All right, let's go into the next one. All next right, let's up, go. The Life, Life of Pablo. Pablo. So, uh, you want to start off at best? Start off with the okay, best. Can I predict yours? Well, yeah, you kind of know what mine's going to be, right? Is it Sanfo on St. Pablo? It is going to be Sanfo on St. Pablo. You want to predict mine? Yours going to be Kendrick on No More Parties in LA. Okay, so that's out of the room now. Okay, yeah, so that and, was yeah. decided. So that, pretty, that, yeah, yeah, that was pretty, pretty obvious. I mean, I, I think that, yes, Kendrick has the best rapping performance on the album, arguably, but for when, when I'm looking at like a, a feature performance on a song, I'm looking like which guest compliments the artist the best. And oftentimes, I'll go towards a singer or someone that maybe isn't rapping because they add that contrast to a song. Mm -hmm. And that's what you got from Sanfo as Kanye's rapping about deep frustrations and airing out all his thoughts it's almost as if he feels like he needs healing and then Sampha's there to like serenade him and it's it's beautiful that's one of Absolutely. my favorite Kanye anytime songs. anytime Sampha comes through together for uh, for a rap collaboration it always does well um and i actually do i have him on another yeah i have him on this list actually for another album We'll be there very soon. But let's talk Spoilers. about my best. Yeah, there we go. Um, so yeah, Kendrick on No More Parties in LA. Everyone knows my take. I think he absolutely washed on this song. Not washed, but like... Yeah, chill. Like, chill like, with the uh, wash uh, uh, allegations. But, chill. No, nah, it's because everyone like heard Kanye fucking spaz and like, you know how it goes. But realistically, when you compare the two verses, it's night and day. No. Nah, it really is really night not. and day. Absolutely it is. Kendrick Lamar on No More Parties in LA. He is vicious. He's rapping with a quick flow. Um, and Kanye's Insta not rapping with a quick Instagram flow. Is Kanye. The best, Instagram Ram is the best, the best place, place to promote, to promote some pussy. pussy. Yeah, there we go. No, I know. Don't fuck around with Kanye that. Kanye has so that many is a good fucking too. Kendrick feature. Guys, K Kanye or Kendrick are no more parties and at least settle I don't, the debate. I, I don't even need to. No, you guys, don't have so to set, you guys have that conversation in the comments sections. You guys have been roasting me for that take for way too long now, and I'm going to die on that no fucking No one's fucking hill. roasting you. It's such a split and, and argument, then, bro. Everyone has no. their own. Their own uh, I, I feel like if you really ask the community, the everyone goes with Kanye on that one. No, it's pretty split. Because but, people are um, like, it's the best rapping performance from on the entire album, and it is. It's just like, you got a fucking 2015 Kendrick Lamar on that same exact track. It's nutty. It's a nutty, nutty performance. Anyway, yeah, let's talk about anyways, the worst. Worst? I have the dream on highlights. I have the dream on highlights too. Yeah. yeah. I just found it so awkward because like he's singing about like, I need every bad bitch at an Equinox. I want to know if you're freaking out. It's like he's singing like this, this type of, I guess, like sort of um, very raunchy lyrics over a gospel sort of sound. Okay, I want you to do something the next awkward. time you listen to this song, all right? Because the first time I heard this song, I thought it was Rihanna that started off the track. I'm being honest with you. I actually thought it was Rihanna vocals. Like, I don't know why. It just, like, fucking confused me. And then I found that it was obviously the dream. But the dream and is more towards the end of the song. I don't think he appears at the beginning. Maybe he's yeah, on yeah, both, but when I looked from at the what credits I remember, on yeah, let's pull this up. Yeah, let's pull because this when up, I ended up going on Genius, I ended up seeing that he had vocals at the beginning of the song. 
if I'm not mistaken. I remember him coming in towards the he end. He has the last intro part. Exactly. He's not at the beginning. He's only at the end. Okay, that's yeah. interesting. My bad for the mistake. But, uh, uh, but So whose vocals are that? At the very beginning, beginning? there's uh, there's Ty Dolla Sign. No, there's not Ty Dolla Sign. There's, there's Thug, Kelly Price, and Kanye. It was Kelly Price. There we go. Okay, interesting. Anyways, um, um, but yeah. yeah. So that's easily the worst feature on the album. Yeah, absolutely. But let's go on to Call Me If You Get Lost by Tyler, the creator. Um, let's start off with the best. What do you have? The best? I have Lil Wayne on Hot Wind Blows. Yeah, I still have Wayne on Hot Wind Blows. Yeah? Absolutely. It's not even debatable. It's like the most scenic verse, him rapping about being on the beach, having his feet out. Like You really feel like you're vacationing with Wayne and Ty... Not Ty Dolla Sign. <laughs> Wayne and Tyler, the <laughs> Too much creator. vultures content. Too many vultures <laughs> Too memories many. <laughs> in the mind right now. Um, but okay, yeah. That was the obvious one. How about the worst? I have 42 Doug on Lemonhead. Really? I thought 42 Doug brought so much energy into that performance. It's I like thought he's that such he... like an outlier for the album, no, too. No, for that song and no. that trap beat, he was perfectly at home. I, I'm not, You're I'm out of your mind. But I'm, I'm not even the biggest fan of Lemonhead, if I'm being honest with you. I find it was a bit out of place. You guys let me know how you um, feel about it. For the longest the time, I wasn't a big fan of Pharrell and Juggernaut, but the more that I listened to it's him, like, he's work. rapping on beat, bro. He's flexing on his haters. Like, he doesn't lower the quality of the song in any way. Even the beat itself. Like, that song grew on me. I'm not going to lie to you. That's actually a pretty good song. Um, I don't go back all that often, but I still think it's a it's a pretty decent song. Even Uzi on the track itself is cool too. Yeah, ultimately though, I went with Tizo Touchdown and run it up. Why? Um, I just felt like his performance was kind of minimal you and went like with Tizo. listening to that song over and over again. I'm like, you know what? Like I almost forgot that he was on here for how minimal. Like he has ad libs throughout the song, but then only towards the end he has that section where he's like, I'm running like a politician. Like he goes into all that and it's very minimal. It doesn't really like add much to the song for me. And um, yeah. So you would go Tizo Touchdown over 42 Doug? I prefer 42 Doug over Tizo, absolutely. Okay, 42 Doug. Let's keep going on with this. Mr. Moran, the big steppers. All right, so best, Samfa and Father Time? I was debating putting Samfa. That was second what? place you, for me. Kodak on um, I, I loved Samfa and Father Time, but it's just the hook. It's not really anything crazy. It's a hook that comes up two, three times. I absolutely went with Ghostface Killer on Purple Hearts, ah. even though it's... What? No, no, no. Don't, don't, don't give me that. Even though it's one of my least favorite songs on the album, That's very Ghostface debatable. comes in and he sounds like he's he's rapping as a vessel for God, bro. Like the, the poetry that he's bringing into the table, the lyricism is outstanding. Like and he shows said, once again why he's one of the greatest it, ever. It's do just it. the thing is, is that you use that Ghostface Killer song in one of the weakest tracks on the album. I don't care. I, I could just but skip it, to his part and enjoy the fuck out of that verse. He almost saved the song. Yeah, but like you were you were talking about this uh, on the Life of Pablo section that we just did, and you were like, well, it has to complement the song itself. It has to complement the artist, and like. That Ghostface Killer verse, it does not belong on that song, Loki. I, 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 do, do you feel like it fits Purple Hearts? It doesn't. Maybe it doesn't fit Purple Hearts. But what I will say is that when I'm looking at just a, an isolated performance in this case, to me, Ghostface Killer was the best feature on Mr. Morale. But also, Baby Keem on Savior Interlude, he killed it too. Yes. That was a strong one. I, I was looking at Savior, Savior Interlude. I ultimately went with Sanfon for all the time. I feel like it was the highlight of the album for me as far as the feature goes as well. Having the chorus playing into like the whole thing of father time and Kendrick's writing. I feel like it was super well calculated. The worst feature on the album for me was Beth Gibbons on Mother I Sober. That's what I went with. I thought that was a pretty epic performance. I thought that it was uh, it was well sung. I, I kind of liked it. It's just so minimal. It's the same thing like you and let's say the Tizo vocals where it's like, Okay, maybe a couple of lines and then in and out. That's pretty much it. That's I, why I, I, I had it. Summer Walker on Purple Arts. Funny enough, I have the best and worst feature on the same song. But that's what I'm trying to tell you. Is like It doesn't necessarily make sense with the Ghostface Killer. Absolutely, it makes sense because I can look at those performances fit. at face value. And Summer Walker, um, sure, her performance is all right. But like Kendrick's rapping um, directly to his wife on the song. And then Summer Walker places into the female role but just talks about like random relationship issues so it kind of felt a bit disjointed for me in comparison to kendrick's performance so that's kind of why i went with her but um yeah it, it ain't love if you ain't if, sorry it ain't love if you ain't ever eat my ass <laughs> quotable is like no other from summer there we go on that one um, uh, all right let's keep going on with this i never liked you by future you know what man not that I was too harsh on this album, but I have slappers on here. I go back. Sure, I have slappers, but it doesn't come from the features. Like, this is no. probably the weakest fucking feature list, not only on this list, but out of maybe any future album to ever come out. That's true. It's um, a really A weak lot one. of features on this did not hit. But my best ESTG on chickens. Me too. Yeah, that was easy. I, I would have chosen Thames. Like, if it wasn't an actual sample and if it was real vocals, yeah. it would have, like, I guess... We have been allowed to use it, but it kind of goes against the game because it's a sample. But yeah, ESTG comes in with like this crazy fucking flow, one of the best songs. Menacing the energy. It's it's really dark. I, I really enjoyed the verse. But for the worst, Drake on I'm On One, bro. 
Really? No, I, I find I, Young Thug on Fur Nut is way worse than Drake no. on a mall one. Like, you're getting some super cringy bars. Arguably, we even said You're getting way my, cringer bars on, on Fur and Nut, yeah, but bro. I, I, I'm not Put a diamond in her butt and it shines when she nuts. Shout out Young Thug. Come what on. are you going to Young Thug for? What are you, go, what are you going to both guys for? Go on to Drake on I'm On One. That is arguably his worst ever feature in his I, career. I'm not going to anyone for We even for, agreed that. We said it was, those like, types it was of a lines. horrible performance. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. No, ball. Bro, I put crack in my ass. I mean, he's kind of like always been outlandish with his bars. That, that, that was delivered in a, in a cool way <laughs> on a crazy song. I'm all worried. You're that, not going Chet to gets the pass. Do not disrespect Chet. I, I'm not disrespect. You're disrespecting Young Thug's like fine lyricism. Like, come on, no way. I'm but, not. But, I'm but not even besides at, that, I, I still don't like the performance itself. The whole yeah ad libs. They don't really work well, yeah. I and mean, he sort of like gets, he loses like the rhythm of his performance to like cater to his ad libs. It's just a bit messy of a performance for me. I think it's definitely worse than Drake on a Mon one. No, once I heard that messy bar delivered, I'm like, no way, we're not doing this right now. Ovechki, the, the Ovechki <laughs> bar, the Ovechki. Yeah, I don't know. Are you? I could come on. We've spoken about this Drake I, I, I'm versus. Not, I'm not saying I'm a fan of it. I'm is just it, saying, is I, it is, I, I okay, think Young this, Thug's is it worse. the worst? Is it the worst feature of his career? Of his career, that. Do you think it's the worst feature verse you've ever heard? It's from up Drake? there. It's up there for yeah. sure. It's uh, it's not great. Yeah. Anyways, let's keep going on with this. Let's go on to not all heroes wear capes. Um. Okay. So, you know how you know how I feel about up to something, and you know how I feel about Young Thug. So that's where I went with the best. I feel like that was probably the best feature on the album. Uh, bleeds into the hook. The verses are incredible. I love his flow. The ad libs are contagious. That's where I went with it. You? What did you have as the best? Um, I had Gunna on Space because I've spoken about this one a lot. To me, that's he, valid. He beats out all five Travis Scott features. Anyone? Any Twenty One Savage performance, and I think it really stands out too because he carried that song solo. You look at a lot of other songs in this album, and there's two, maybe three artists on mm -hmm. them. Gunna slid that's from valid. beginning to end. All throughout the song. Can't Next place for me, though, was going to be either Drake or Offset on No Complaints. That's, that's, who that's I had a big one up. as well. Um, I was also considering Sway Lee on Dreamcatcher. I love the vocal mm -hmm. performance. I don't think it would have made it, but that's a, uh, that's a feature I really appreciate. You know what? Um, I really felt like if the only one interlude was extended and it was an actual real yeah. track, it would have definitely been in like my top three songs off of this album. Um, and we ended up doing a top five, uh, like a top five ranking of. Uh, Not All Heroes Wear Capes on a recent episode that we did on the main channel. Um, I think it was a couple of months ago. So if you guys want to check that out, it's up for you guys. But the worst, I went Offset on Only You. Absolutely Offset on Only You. We agree on that one. I mean, But you've always tries... kind of defended this verse, though. I thought it was okay because I like the whoa, whoa, whoa. Like that whole hook that he has is cool. But when you get into the verse, the writing's poor. He's rapping about like eating it up like a cold cut. Um, and he some, also tries like... Hotel. He tries like this, uh, some gabagool. Um, no, he tries some, uh, like a Latin cringe accent, and I'm like, ah. He just didn't fit the track list. He, 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 he didn't no, fit the song. Th the the more it. I listen to it, I love J Balvin and uh, Wizkid on it, but. Yeah, they made sense for that song, absolutely. Yeah, that's why I, I do love the who, song. Who could have replaced him, actually, in that scenario? So, like another, Sway Lee. <laughs> yeah, yeah Sway Lee that's facts. Yeah, you could probably go out and Sway Lee in there. Fuck yeah. Uh, but regardless, though, yeah, I ended up going Offset on Only You, but Absolutely. let's go on to 2001 by Dr. Dre. This one was rough. So I want to hear your yeah, okay. contenders for this before you get to the, the um, major pick. Okay, Hit Hitman on Ackwright was definitely up there. Hitman on Big Eagles. Th th those two are definitely into contention. Exhibit uh, on What's the Difference. Yeah, that's a big one as well. I was talking about um, Snoop Dogg as well. In the next on, episode? On and on Bitch. That was another okay. one as well. That's a big verse for me. Ultimately, though, I went Eminem. I forgot about Dre. That's the best Absolutely, feature. Absolutely, bro. That is the he best just feature. comes in on there like this Not. unleashed pit bull sounding so animated. Um, just the fact also that he wrote the song and he wrote Dre's parts too. Like it's a fucking masterclass from Eminem. Um, the double time flows, the sound effects he's using, everything about Talking it. Talking about burning down a grandmother's house and killing her dog. You it's know? goaded. It's, it's a goaded it's, fucking performance. It's really uh, goaded, performance. absolutely. It's like that prime Slim Shady Eminem type of performance. Probably one of the best verses from that era of Eminem. But the worst was hard. Because honestly, every single know, verse on this tough. album is wa is not wasted. It was really tough. Um, I went to Miss Rock on Let's Get High. I went with Nocturnal on Bang Bang. No, that was my worst. That yeah. verse is fire. But, I mean, the even, flows he's even using. Even Miss Rock awesome. has solid verses throughout the album. I, I, I mean, you see, because I prefer her, I prefer her verse on Murder Inc. Yeah, for that's sure. where she does well. But Nocturnal, one, I mean, like, it just to me like the only little flaw I had. I'm like. The rhythm's not there. It's almost like he's kind of reading out the verse. No, that it's is not my favorite. That's one of my favorite songs off the album, Loki. But th there's no bad features, though, on this album. That's what yeah, you have to come really to realize. For, for as long as the track list isn't how many names you have appearing, there's not really that many fucking weak points. It's just it's a testament true. to how great the album is. But okay, you want to go into the Carter 4? Let's move 4? on to the Carter 4 by Lil Wayne. This was 
my toughest choice for the best feature what out of this you, whole okay, episode. Okay, so listen, I know who I went with, but in contention, I had Drake on She Will. That was one. I had uh, Rick Ross on John. John. That was another one that I had. Um, Andre 3K and Tech 9 on Interlude. Yes, but you see that Tech 9 versus Vicious. It's great. That was one. But I ended up going with Corey Guns on Six Foot Seven. Me but, too. But Nas, yes. Nas on Outro, bro. Yes. That's one of Nas's best ever guest verses. Like of the you modern so? of the modern day, of the modern era. That's one of his best ever guest verses. That's, it's that's, extended, that's, it's yeah. long. He's rapping his ass off, but Corey Guns, man. He matches Wayne's energy perfectly on arguably one of Wayne's best ever rapping and performances. He, he, like, it's a per perfect example of like the student matching the master because he's even rapping like Wayne um, with the yeah, slick wordplay. And like this was a moment where it's like just based on one verse, there is a huge amount of hype rallying around an artist because Corey Guns had just signed um, Two Young Money. Around the same time that this verse came I'm out, I'm kind of sad that his career never like really took off, took off like that because yeah, he never really <laughs> dropped music and he was dealing with legal issues and there was oh, a whole okay. uh, mess there. But I mean, yeah, he, he was a monster. That last flow, bro, is a untouchable monster, on that monster. verse. But he has so many great performances with Wayne, even on like the dedication. What, what dedication performance? Yeah, um, was it? Uh, you don't even know. What, was I he don't on remember. that? Was he on that remix? He was on one of those remixes, guys. Let me know in the comments section. But let's keep going on with this. Go on to pray for Paris. All well, right? no, so, where, where I gotta do the words? Oh, shoot, you're jumping sorry, ahead. My, my bad. Um, uh, where's Kevin Rudolph on Overcane? No, it's uh, T Pain on How to Hate. Such an easy choice, bro. I like the T Pain no, performance. Too much, way too much reverb on the vocals. The auto tune is too much. You're also. getting like a prime T Pain like. Auto -tune, nice squealing like, in the middle of the song, bro. It sounds like awful. It. How to Hate? No, I'm cool with it. it. it that's one of the worst songs. Period on that album. It's not the one. I don't know defend it. Absolutely. Uh, anyways, how I, to can't, love I, can't, I can't like. No, how to love is amazing. Much better. Absolutely. Much better than how to hate. You see, that's one of the best songs off the For album. For sure. One of the most iconic. Got hate is one of the worst. Trust. But regardless, though, I, like I'm not even mad at that pick because it's either like T Pain or it's Kevin Rudolph for me. Yeah. Kevin Rudolph. I, I, I'm Kane. fine with that one. It, yeah, it's like it's it was just, just it's kind of forgettable. You never really go back to Novakin. Period. He has the hook. He has a bit of like backing vocals on it. So I'm just not a big fan of it. But let's keep going on with this. Pray for Paris. All right. So, um, contenders. I, I, so don't think, I don't think I don't think yeah I, I think you got to talk about Tyler and Joey on 327. I think those have to be in contention. I didn't go with them. I didn't um, go with them either. But I wanted to go with Joey low key just because of how wavy and smooth he sounds on that song and even bars. I already like, know where you're going. Though. How could I lose the shit that these fools will do to be in my shoes? I'm done playing by rules. Like Joey, in my opinion, had a better performance than Tyler himself. Yes, which is a hot take. That's very true. Um, um, I would say uh, Benny the Butcher on War Paint. Uh, that was not on Warpaint, Warpaint. sorry, on um, Allah Sent Me. Yeah. That's another one. I'm, it's, is that back on streaming for you, by the way? It's not. I don't think it is, man. At least we have a George Bond, though. But yeah, ultimately, I chose Freddie Gibbs as having the best $500, $500 ounces. ounces. The most complete feature on the album starts off immediately with like the, the mic check check. Yeah. Um, and just do, do, gets do, the do, energy do. going. And yeah, even the, the sniffing sounds as he's fucking <laughs> talking about cooking up some coke. It's check, just check, check. Pretty nuts. Um, but also, Rock Marciano did his thing too on $500 ounces. Absolutely. But that's, is that the best song off the album? Yeah, for me at least. All right, how about the worst? I have Keisha Plum on Party with Pop Smoke. Yeah, and listen, if you're a Griselda fan, you know that she's a staple artist when it comes to a Griselda album. But And she has a pretty decent verse too. Yeah, it's spoken word poetry, you know? What are you going to do? It's one of the least interesting features that's, off the album. That's what it is. All right, let's go on to the last album for today, or should I say double album. This is going to be the documentary 2 and 2.5 by The Game. Super underrated, man. I found so many songs going back through this track list. Talking about the best, though. I posted this on my story. It's Kendrick Lamar on On Me, bro. There's no way. There's no way, bro. That's like prime Kendrick Lamar to put a butterfly vibes. No. He has an incredible verse. He also has backing vocals and singing performances towards the end of the no, song the itself. Best. That is the best. No, that's arguably the best. the best song on the entire run itself. That's not the well. best feature on the album. I mean, who, who is it? I think who, who he has. Who do you think has a better one? I think he has a strong verse. I, just, I don't like the hook. The whole on me, that's on me. Like, it wasn't a strong Kendrick hook. He shouldn't have been taking care of it. Oh, and that's no what brings it down points for me. Um, ultimately, this should be an obvious, in my opinion. It's Drake on 100. Like, any no. day of the week. And no. you cannot deny this. It's the most memorable verse on the whole album. It's maybe the most memorable. It's the most memorable. But technical wise, Y'all better not on. come to my studio with that fake shit. So many quotables. And him sort of letting people know, like, yeah, I'm, I'm on top of the pyramid, but... I could have catered to the conscious sound if I wanted to as well. Like, it's just him sort of letting people know that he's intentional with the moves he made in the rap game. And um, he just, he's in full control of that instrumental, bro. He takes it over. It's insane. <sighs> crazy. It is a crazy song. I can't, yeah, I can't you, be you, mad you, at you that. You can't debate that. Mm, you can't. I'm not sure, bro, because I'm, if I'm being honest with you, like... I would still go like you're getting a prime typical butterfly Kendrick on this. That's my problem, yeah, and it's, it's always cool. been my favorite song off of it. But the worst will I am 
on the ghetto? Will I am on LA instead for me. Yeah, really? Why? Bro, because like he has that whole uh, chorus exchange between him and Fergie, and it sounds like the most plastic, robotic mesh of vocals well, I've ever listened the, even to. Even for the ghetto, like I'm not a fan of his vocals or the chorus on it as well, and like it's sandwiched between Nas verses. Yeah, there was so a lot of Will I Am on the <laughs> documentary too, and I'm like, yeah, we don't we don't need you, we don't need you on this album this much, but um, on, on LA, like there's even a part of his verse where he's just like. LA Dodgers, LA Rams, like he's just shouting out <laughs> random like Los Angeles sports teams, and you're like, okay, <laughs> what's, I guess what's it works. Serve me, yeah. So I ended up um, going also, Mulan on the Kanye ghetto. had a bit of a weak performance on Mula to me. I was kind of uh, considering that. Yeah, too. that that was in contention as well. But guys, let us know where we got it right. Let us know where we got it wrong, and which video concept would you like to see next from NFR Podcast on the NFR Plus channel? Thank you guys so much for watching this, and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.